Hello, I welcome you all in this course on steam and gas power systems. Today we will continue our discussions on high pressure boilers. Today we will discuss uh, two high pressure boilers. One is Luffer boiler and another is Velox boiler. We will start with the Luffer boiler. Now, in this boiler we use turbines as well. In this boiler not only uh, uh, there is a circulation of steam, turbines also use that makes it very interesting. Another uh, feature of this boiler is that steam is generated with the superheated steam. Steam is itself generated by superheated steam. So, there is no soot deposition in the evaporator. <coughs> now, soot deposition is a problem in the boiler, especially in the economizer. If you look first of all, I will in brief I will uh, explain how sooting is uh, deal in case of economizer. What happens? In economizer there are number of tubes and economizer and they are connected with the help of a header. And water is circulated inside these tubes. The flue gases coming from the boiler they are passed over these tubes right and transmission of heat takes place. Flue, flue gases from the boiler because these flue gases consist of the burnt carbon particles right and these particles they stick on the surface of the tube and when these this shooting takes place over the surface of the tube this hampers the heat transfer. The effectiveness of the economizer is reduced and inside the economizer there is a flow of water right. So, scrubbers are provided. So, scrubbers are provided on the surface of the boiler tu this tubes scrubbers are provided different type of scrubbers are provided. The job this scrubber says to scratch the surface of the tube and there is a mechanical arrangement pulley and chip type of arrangement for the movement of these scrubbers along the length of the tube. So, slowly they keep on moving in order to remove the soot from the tube surface. However, in this case in, 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 in this Luffer boiler the steam generated with the help of a superheated steam. So, there is no flue gas at all. So, steam generation does not involve the generation of soot on the surface. So, that is another benefit of uh, this uh, boiler. So, first of all we will draw the schematic of the boiler to understand the functioning of this boiler. I am drawing very simplified schematic diagram right. There is a grate where the fuel is burned ok. A separate arrangement is made for steam generation it is separate from the boiler ok. And here the generation of steam takes place with the help of superheated steam. So, first of all we will start with the hot well, this is hot well consisting of water and as we did earlier also here the heat is extracted or heat will be extracted through an economizer by heating uh, feed water. So, in the economy the feed water is circulated through economizer for the heating purpose. So, heating has been done by flue gases which are leaving the uh, boiler right that the heat is trapped and this feed water is sent to the evaporation drum right. So, simply by just taking 
uh, 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 here a feed pump has to be placed, feed pump. So, just from the hot well the water is taken and it goes to the feed pump. Feed pump circulate waters in the water in the economizer and where the exchange of heat takes place between the flue gases and the water which is circulated in these tubes and then the heated water goes to the evaporation drum. And the inside the evaporation drum there are number of nozzles, right. There are number of nozzles which spray this water and this water is converted into the steam. The, the superheated steam is supplied from this side and how then later on I will explain to you how the superheated steam is generated. Superheated steam is supplied from this side and this water taking heat from the superheated steam is converted into the steam. And this steam goes to the shell, there is a steam pump, there is a pump for circulation of a steam, right. And from here it goes to the shell and <laughs> for the heating purpose and heating in the shell takes. So, this is filled this because here the burning of fuel is taking place, the entire space is filled with the flue gases. This is all, this all is filled with the flue gases. So, water which is water which is circulated in these tubes is <laughs> heated and is subsequently converted into the steam. So, we can directly get saturated steam from here, but in as, as the past practice we have to superheat the steam right because superheated steam is very much required here especially because this superheated steam will be used for converting water into the steam. So, this place is also filled with the flue gases, this place is also filled, this is all filled with the flue gases right and <laughs> they are separated by these walls. This is very simplified diagram. Right. Now, this steam which is present inside this tube is again sent for superheating here. The steam is again superheated and after superheating it is taken out and this steam is not directly sent to this place, but then it will, it will become a closed loop. Then we do not require feed, feed water, feed pump because in the system we are feeding the water. So, what we are doing here, uh, two third of a steam is only going to this place, evaporation drum, two third of a steam, this is two third of a steam. And where the one third of a steam is going? One third of a steam because it is a high temperature steam. If you look at the specifications of this boiler, uh, which I forgot to tell you earlier. The capacity is 100 tons per hour, pressure is 140 bar and temperature is 500 degree centigrade. So, superheated steam is, is, is very uh, on, 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 on very high temperature. So, one third of a steam is used for generating power in a turbine, high temperature, high pressure turbine, uh, turbine, in a turbine, right. After expansion in the turbine, right, it again goes for reheating, there is a reheating cycle. So, steam goes for the reheating and then it goes to the low pressure turbine, there is a low pressure turbine. Right? And f the exhaust of the low pressure turbine shall have I mean sufficient energy for another process. So, it can be used for some process. So, it can go for some doing some other process for the process process heat, it can be used as a process heat 
and remaining two third of the water superheated uh, vapor, it will go to the evaporation drum, where evaporation of uh, this saturated liquid will be taking place in form of the steam and the rest of the cycle I have already explained you. So, it appears to be slightly complicated because here <laughs> we are not generating a steam by directly heating from the flue gases. Through the flue gases simply the superheated steam is attained and this superheated steam is used for uh, uh, heating the uh, water in the uh, evaporator. Now, the, the, the best part is there is no sooting here. Normally, this boiler is used for marine applications right? and there is no sooting here that is the best part of it. So, we can go for the saline water also here in this boiler. right? So, and uh, rest of the characteristics uh, uh, are, uh, I mean, rest of the things are same. In addition to that, we are getting output also through the turbines. These two turbines, we are getting the output from this boiler. It is a compact boiler, and uh, actual boiler. This is uh, this is also only schematic representation of this boiler. Actual boiler, if you look at, it is quite different from this. I mean, but the basic working or the movement of the fluid is like this only. Now, after this, we will take up the last one is Velox boiler. Now, Velox boiler, now let us write first uh, uh, characteristics of this boiler. The capacity of this boiler is if the boiler is 100 tons per hour and efficiency you will be I mean you may be surprised it is only 55 to 60 percent and it is a fire tube boiler. It is not a water it is a fire tube that is the uniqueness of this boiler. It is high pressure fire tube boiler. <laughs> Normally they are high pressure water tube boilers but this one is high pressure fire tube boilers and this boiler contains gas turbine. compressor, feed pump, rest of the things are same, feed pump and generator and all. But the main thing is it consists of gas turbine and compressor as well, right. And the flow of gases is supersonic here in this boiler. The flow of the flue gases is, is supersonic. First of all, I will uh, show you the schematic of this boiler. Now, it comes again, there is a sort of vessel. In this vessel, the fuel is supplied, there is a fuel tank fuel tank and from the fuel tank there is a feed pump and through the feed pump the fuel is supplied to this boiler. This boiler is also supplied air at 3 bar. Pressure of the air is 3 bar. Now, this air burns this fuel and the velocity of the flue gases is where you can imagine because 3 bar pneumatic pressure is quite high pressure. So, at this pressure the velocity of the flue gases in this boiler is they are, they are, they are supersonic. The velocity of the flue gases is supersonic and they are vertical tubes and they are fire tubes. It means they are concentric tubes inside tube there is a flue gas and in enrolled space there is water. So, they are fire tubes and these fire tubes have annular space which is filled with the water and water is circulated with the help of a pump. There is a pump which circulates water in the annular space. There is a steam st separator which is connected to the pump. So, pump is drawing water from steam separator and generated steam is again going back to the steam separator. So, it is a closed loop. So, I mean it is drawing water from the steam separator after generation of a steam, steam is connected in the steam separator. 
every high pressure boiler boiler must have a super heater so super heating arrangement is made because flue gases <coughs> from this chamber they go to the super heater there is a super heater so <coughs> the steam saturated steam is collected here so this saturated steam goes to the super heater is it clear steam is generated here in in the, in this in this housing if there is a, a separation uh, steam separator where water and steam are separated the steam generated because it has to be superheated superheating arrangement is made and this area is filled with the flue gases right then superheated steam then can be used for process work i mean it can go to the turbine and generate power but still we have flue gases and their flue gases are at very high temperature now here in in this case a turbine and a compressor combination is taken first the gases are run through a turbine gas turbine there is a gas turbine so gases are passed through a gas turbine and gas turbine runs a compressor now the gas turbine runs a now this gas turbine is coupled with a compressor so is coupled with a compressor right compressor takes air from the surroundings and the air is compressed and is sent for burning the fuel right so the high pressurization of ambient air is done with the help of a compressor compressor runs with the help of a gas turbine and gas turbines runs with the flue gases coming out of the uh, super heater now exhaust of the gas turbine because gas turbine exhaust temperature gas temperature is also quite high after extracting high grade energy from the heat still the temperature of uh, the gases coming out of the gas turbine is high so this high temperature gas turbine gases are sent to the economizer for for heating the feed water so there is an economizer in this economizer economizer the feed water is heated and then feed water is supplied to the separation tank so the exhaust from the gas turbine it is sent to the economizer this economizer where exchange of heat takes place then the heat is sent to the this is flue gases movement this is flue gases movement of flue gases right so this is economizer feed water comes from here so feed water coming from the feed water tank it is sent to the economizer where exchange of heat takes place between the flue gases and the feed water and this high temperature feed water is again sent to the separator and from here again the same cycle takes place so this is the uh, working of velox uh, boiler the speciality of this boiler is the pressurization of air which is used for burning the fuel is done with the help of exhaust gases coming from the superheater it is a compact boiler it is a compact boiler it is a, it is very quick start type of boiler it is a quick start type of boiler very high combustion rate and excess air which is required for the burning of fuel is less in this boiler because there is a lot of turbulence in the boiler in addition to these boilers there are fluidized bed boilers also which are nowadays very popular fluidized bed boiler these boilers they come in different combination and in fluidized bed boiler there is a bed uh, of uh, maybe refractory sand refractory sand of very very fine particles and initially this bed is heated with the help of uh, flammable gases or lpg right 
and when the temperature of this bed is reached to 650 degree centigrade, right, and air is passed from the bottom, that is why it is called fluidized bed. These fine particles they suspend into the air. So, from the bottom side, there are holes in the bottom side or provision of supply of air from the bottom side and this bed is filled with the uh, refractory sand or uh, some other material and air is passed from the bottom side. These particles, these fine particles, they do suspend in the air by the pressure of air and these particles are then heated with the, by burning fuel in this bed and the temperature of bed is increased up to 650 degree centigrade. I am simply explaining the working principle of uh, fluidized bed boiler, there are many, they are available in many combinations. After that, after attaining a temperature of 650 degree centigrade, coal is put on the fluidized bed, right. And the, uh, uh, the auxiliary fuel, which was, I will, call, I will call it auxiliary fuel, which was used for raising temperature of this sand up to 650 degree centigrade, the supply is cut off. And now coal burns on a fluidized bed. Complete combustion of coal takes place in this case. Fluidized bed can be of dolomite also. So in some of the applications, dolomite is also used. Dolomite is calcium, magnesium, carbonate. So dolomite stone is also used in instead of refractory sand. The dolomite uh, sand is also used as a uh, um, uh, this uh, fluidized bed in, in such type of boiler. And there are two types, again classification is there, if the depth of bed is 1 feet, less than 1 feet, it is known as shallow bed, right. So, in that case, it is less than 30 centimeters, right. And deep bed, bed boiler, when it is greater than 100 centimeters. So, this is the how the classification of fluidized bed boiler is done. The air velocity remains approximately 2.5 meters per second, okay. And another thing is we can do the desulfurization. Desulfurization can also be done here, so that sulfur does not go with the flue gases. So, in for the desulfurization, <coughs> The dolomite or limestone can also used. We can put some limestone here. So, desulfurization of the flue gases can also take place. So, the fluidized bed boiler also also becoming popular. Their efficiency is quite high and complete burning of uh, uh, fuel takes place in such type of boilers. So, I think that is all for uh, today and in the next class we will start with the draft. <coughs>